Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live Special number 237, the Galaxy S6 launch. Twit Live Specials are brought to you by Lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on demand video courses to help you strengthen your business technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash twit. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash twit. Well, good morning in Petaluma, good evening in Barcelona, and good afternoon to Andy and Otko. We're about to cover an yet another <laughs> Samsung event. Who knows? Dancing girls, women doing their another. nails, chamber music. <laughs> Hello, we, we know it'll be we know it'll be vaguely misogynistic. We just just, <laughs> just to know in what flavor it'll be vaguely misogynistic. Also joining us from Bloomberg Business Week, Mark Millian. Good to see you again, Mark. Good to see you too. Thanks for joining us. Yes, I'm excited for the creepy Broadway production we're about to witness. <laughs> Last year in uh, Barcelona, they had a very uh, soporific chamber orchestra playing about this time. Now, well, we could show the video. They're just repeating over and over again. Some uh, images. Uh, this is Galaxy Unpacked 2015. Uh, of course, Mobile World Congress is uh, going on uh, right now. And this may be, HTC had an event. So this is one of the first events. The, the, show, the Mobile World Congress, did it start today? Or does it start uh, it tomorrow? It starts tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. So much like CES, uh, the keynotes are, the big keynotes are often before the uh, actual event. We're expecting in just about two minutes if they start on time. Yeah, there was the uh, HTC Valve um, announcement. Right. A ago. So HTC announced a, uh, a, a virtual reality uh, helmet for use with Steam. Is that what they said? Yep. Yeah, they're working. Uh, they were teaming up with Valve to, um, to create yet another VR system. And if that's uh, not confusing enough, it's called Vive. So it's Valve's Vive by HTC. It's catchy. Ooh. Looks, uh, everybody's doing one of these. This is Oculus Rift-like. In fact, it looks very much like the Rift or the uh, Samsung VR. Um, kind of a helmet-y thing. Oh, wait a minute. Let's, uh, let's get going because I think uh, Samsung's about to uh, begin their event. Can you see my uh, screen? Uh, Jason Clanthus, who has also risen early for this event. We're excited. There have been a lot of rumors about the Galaxy S6, including, I think, the most interesting, that it might not include Samsung software, but instead Microsoft software, perhaps part of the deal to bury the hatchet in the one Microsoft of the, one, of the best, one of the coolest rumors I heard is that uh, I've been hearing is that they're also going to tone down like the Samsung, quote, enhancements and make it a little bit more like uh, pure Android. Uh, it's going to be running Lollipop, and it seems as though a lot of the problems that Samsung and HTC and all these other skins solve are now solved by the actual load itself. So maybe they're thinking of this as uh, differentiation is a good thing, but maybe they're thinking that we're just sort of mucking things up by adding things that people are not going to need anyway. I remember talking to, uh, I think it was Rick Osterloh at uh, Motorola about Blur. He said, I created Blur, but that was in uh, the gingerbread days of Android when you really needed something on yeah, top of absolutely. Android, not only to differentiate, but just to make it usable. And, you know, Motorola earlier this week released the second generation of their very low-cost uh, E-Series. And it is as pure as you can get. It has two Motorola apps or three Motorola apps, but otherwise, in every respect, absolutely pure Android. I, I recommend uh, the Moto X as the best default choice for an Android phone, specifically because they don't screw anything up. What, what is also goes under uh, under understood is that all that extra stuff puts load on the CPU, it puts load on the battery, uh, and the Moto X, in my experience, feels so much faster just because it has the same CPU as almost anything else, but it has less to do. It hands it all off to Android. We all should also mention that at, at that HTC event, they announced uh, as expected as leaks had suggested a uh, HTC one the M9 very familiar uh, look very much like the M8 which frankly is just keeping a, a phone that was beautifully designed in, in the same power yeah. buttons been moved 1080p LCD five inches but it is the new Snapdragon 810 this is the latest Qualcomm 64-bit yeah. uh, eight core processor three gigs of RAM 
a very large 2840 milliamp hour battery, which might help a little yeah. bit with battery life. The boom sound speakers in the front, and of course, Lolly Lollipop 5.0 and to me. Now. To me, the biggest feature is that they finally lost the lost their interest in that four megapixel ultra pixel camera, and now you have an actual twenty megapixel shooter yeah. as your main camera. I, I liked a lot about the M8 last year, but when you're shooting four megapixel pictures, it's like having a Polaroid. Either yeah. either it's all there on the screen, or it's not there. And if you can't crop, you do, you can't do a lot of editing. It was enough to make me not recommend it. Twenty's good, and uh, yeah, there's and they still have the four uh, on the front, so it's a very good front facing uh, selfie camera. They took, still, exactly. I think they they took that dual lens system, I think, and made it in the, into the front facing camera. Right. So you can still get some of those tricks. Are they starting out? Yeah, no more depth sensing. It's like segments. we're getting some very dramatic lights and smooth lines on the screen here. Close encounters of the S6 kind. It's the question that begins all our exploring. We okay. We, we're in the planetarium now. <laughs> it does. It's cool. It's our imagination. The majesty of the universe. You mentioned that our way. Mike Elgin and Miriam Jouar are at this event, tomorrow. and we'll be uh, reporting from Mobile World Congress all week. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Today. Metals will flow. Metals will flow. Oh, for God's sake! As the, everybody wants to be in showbiz. Melts. <laughs> Well, hey, at least now they've gotten a little more modern in their showbiz appeal. Borders I'm going to show it's a mad, 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 mad world because they do have <laughs> the three-screen Cinerama set up. This is a Cinerama. I imagine in the audience they're very excited. This looks beautiful. Colors will live. This is very similar to the teaser video they released. In fact, the same copy. The future will be the present. And now, the future. Lights away. Whoa. Well, a lot of people in that room. Yeah, it's big. 2015. Everybody's okay. They did give chairs to people. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the head of global marketing for the IT and mobile. Wow, edition, look at all those Young panels. Lee. We're watching live coverage of the Samsung Unpacked event for 2015. This is where we expect <laughs> Samsung will announce. It is like Close Encounters. It is. It's a six phone. Good evening, things. everyone. Welcome to Unpack 2015. I've led product launches at Samsung since the first Galaxy. What an incredible journey. But let me tell you, tonight is big. We are sharing with you the result from the most significant team effort in this company's history. We started from the ground up and reached for something entirely new. And on that note, let's get ready to unveil the next galaxy. Please welcome our CEO, Mr. J.K. Shin. Hello. Thank you all for joining us. This is an exciting day. No more internet rumors. <laughs> Today, we unveil what's next. These products are a result of a simple philosophy, a philosophy that's made Samsung the leading smartphone company in the world. It comes down to two words. Relentless innovation. I may not be the best public speaker. That's because my first language is engineering. Oh, I like that. Oh, Ooh, <laughs> clever. You see what he did there? We got here because we are passionate about technology. And we will never rest on our past achievement. We listened to our customers. I don't know how The Verge has done we it, but they've already got pictures of the phone and a release date, April 10th oh, worldwide. Yeah, there was an embargo, so our story yeah. should have just gone. Okay, so you too, okay. There, there were full reviews of the uh, new HTC too. All four major U.S. carriers and U.S. cellular will carry both the S6 and the S6 Edge. The Edge, as rumored, is a three-screen phone, left, right, and center. LTE technology. The note, the gear. No pricing yet at this point. Yes, 
It's a crowded market. Have you played with it, Mar uh, Mark? You may have noticed this. Um, no, I have not, Definitely but we have. do have a hands-on from uh, Sam Grobard in New York. We got a chance to play around with it. Um, he said it was very Others nice. He described it as fancy. So they're, they've ditched the plastic. For Never, yeah, that's the first time I've heard a Samsung phone described that way. Class of smartphone. Yeah, I mean, These are class of design. Sam's take was basically that, you know, what we uh, have people thought that the, everyone was going to go down market and Apple would have to make cheaper phones. Yeah. And the opposite was true. Um, the down market went up market. Was simple. Uh, and so this is Samsung responding with, you know, ditching the plastic, creating more, um, you know, finely engineered metal and glass phones. Right. In the world. That's what comes next. The S5 really was a disappointment to me, and I think to many. I don't think sold very well. It just wasn't different enough yeah. from the S4. They, they haven't really done a big leap since the S3, and the F, the S3 was almost revolutionary, mm -hmm. not just for Samsung, but for Android in general. That's, that's what got me to switch, the strength of this. I'm just sorry they have not been able to capitalize on this. Well, but the Notes have been quite successful, and I carry a Note yeah, 4. Exactly. Uh, I think the Note 4 is arguably the best Android phone out there right now, except for my Samsung chunk. It might be the Note 4 might be one of the best uh, phones you can get out there. I think yeah. it's the equivalent of the uh, six. I agree. The iPhone six for yeah, excellent camera, great screen. The stylus Super is unique. Yeah. Oh, I'm really waiting for. I've got to get Terminator Two vibe off of this. It is. Oh yeah, you know what? That's the Terminator, isn't it? Oh. Michael Apple Bay bed. presents. This sort of like really cinematic thing. Okay, so we're, so we're definitely That's seeing good. the curved screen. Yeah, this definitely. is the, the, the uh, edge. Do, yeah, we, we've all we've all seen that in so many pictures by now. So yeah, this isn't coming as a, as a shock. My concern is holding this uh, three-screen phone because there's really nowhere to put your fingers without putting them on a screen. I wasn't crazy about the first edge, the, the two-screen edge. Ladies and gentlemen. This is Galaxy S6 and Galaxy S6 Edge. Hold for applause. <laughs> <laughs> Wave it around. <laughs> Drive the camera around crazy. Okay. These are the most advanced pop smartphones in the world. They're not called smartphones. That's just, he's first no language is engineering, my friends. No other phone so can match. So we're looking at the but 6 Edge and the 6 as two different products? Is that what we saw on that left screen? Apparently so, yeah. Yep. Engineering term, That's smart. I don't know. Really cool. it's, it's an interesting idea having this really Edge cool. curved screen. Yeah. But with all Samsung innovation, quote unquote, it display. comes down to support. And they're not going to get it across all Android the devices. The processor. Yeah, the motto was relentless innovation, best not relentless support. On the <laughs> conditions. None. There's the Exynos processor. Samsung is going to use the Exynos again With in its international Nox versions. They did not say what they'll use in the U.S. In the past, they've used Qualcomm chips. They were apparently, the, the, the OEM was having overheating problems the with data the, protection available. Uh, the uh, 810, so we'll see. Also, Samsung Pay will push the boundaries Samsung of Pay, this is, of course, their response to Apple. They bought uh, convenience Loop and Pay for both merchant and consumers. And that picture there showed Loop Pay in action, which works we with standard swipe machines with by sending a magnetic field out to the swipe machine. Such as MasterCard mm. and Vija. Vija. Many more That's banks nice. and financial institutions are joining forces to provide customers with the great flexibility. Course, Google Wallet with an NFC chip in most Android phones works perfectly well. Payment. Um, but Samsung's looking to expand it to uh, swipe machines, we know the which are still prevalent value in the US. Of our devices. Depends on connection speed, so we are relentless in pursuing the best LTE technology. 5.1-inch QHD Super AMOLED Compares. display, 3 gigs RAM. This is great news. When we Three are storage choices, ready, 32, 64, or 128 32. gigs of internal storage. 16 megapixel Finally. camera. These with OIS, beautifully designed, a improved fingerprint that. sensor that no longer requires a swipe. But a Samsung would believe in much more like Apple's Touch ID. Design that does something. Infrared heart rate monitor. 
It is also used to help obtain white balance for the camera. It's built right in. Qi and PMA wireless charging, so both standards will be supported. In the dark, you will see what I mean. That's a design with a purpose. That's the future. Let me close by saying this. I'm very proud of this company and the team behind it. I believe that Samsung has an important role to play in advancing technology in our daily lives. So sad to say that removable batteries, micro SD card slots, and waterproofing are not a part of these new S6 And if we get there first, others will follow. And frankly, that was another differentiator that I really liked. That's how we transform society S5 and the Note 4. Which one, waterproof? Or? No, I, yeah, waterproofing, not a big deal for me, but the, the SD card slot and, and the fact that you could buy a second battery that's what yeah. and pry off the back. But, of course, that's going to impact the design. It's one of the reasons next. Samsung had crappy now. plastic backs because and you could so, pry them off and get to the battery the deal, and the SD card slot. The Galaxy S6 and I'm surprised the Galaxy that uh, weather resistance hasn't today. become more of a popular feature. I would think that people would be all over a phone that than maybe well, you can't submerge it in the toilet, well, who would want it back before. after that? But you don't have to worry about getting caught in the rain. You don't have to worry it. about like sweating with it in your pocket. Right. The people yeah, don't seem, it's, 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 one of the it's nice to have, but people don't seem to be clamoring for it. Yeah, they, they were so that was like the big marketing feature of the last phone. It's interesting, yeah. isn't it, that they're not doing commercials and everything. That explains the 128 gig storage model. Without an SD card, you might want to buy more storage same physical home eight. button which is a little disappointing the s6 and the s6 edge are the result of our mission to redefine the galaxy brand we returned to the drawing board and imagined a totally new design never before seen performance and the next level of enterprise solution the all new galaxy Let's begin by taking a look at the design. We're watching live coverage of the Samsung Unpacked event for 2015 from Barcelona, Spain, part of the Mobile World Congress launch. I'm Leo Laporte with Andy Anako and Mark Millian. I'm glad there that it's a woman who's sort of anchoring the whole event. Yeah, that's that's a big change yeah. for Samsung. And, you know, a professional woman who yeah, appears exactly, to have been exactly. involved in the product process rather than someone... It's kind of probably an acknowledgement of, as you said, Andy, the slightly sexist nature of previous yeah. Samsung. Either way, either way it's, a good, it's a good move. I hope that she does... I hope that she gets to do more than simply introduce seconds, though. But I'm glad. I'm glad it's there. Still very, very classic styling. Looks like... You, there's no question it's a galaxy, right? Right. And Samsung's probably a little bit uh, interested in not getting sued by Apple again over styling. They want to continue to use well, their own styling language. So, I, I yeah, honestly they think they definitely have a signature. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I also think they moved away from copying the iPhone after the S2. Yeah, that was a while ago. But yeah, this is... <laughs> lawyers are watching this as intently as anybody else yeah. <laughs> in the world. It does, it does look cool. I mean, if all the curved screen does is just cause a cool looking phone that you will want to have. I mean, you, you're walking into the AT&T store, you can buy any one of three or four $250 premium phones. It's beautiful, isn't cool. it? The S6 and the S6 Edge, the most advanced smartphones in the world with a design to match. Every detail on these devices was carefully considered, crafted to serve a significant purpose for our We haven't our seen the screen lit up yet, though, have we? Focusing no, and I'm still, of course, very interested in the software and the, the uh, UI. Defined. I presume it'll at be lollipop, but will it be touch whiz, touch whiz light, or nothing at all? Edge right. truly reflect our energy and commitment to designing The phone looks with massive in her hands. <laughs> Take a look. The first one inches. curved smartphone in the world. There's the, the double edge. It took Years of innovation to produce this mesmerizing design that we all thought was a thing of the future. And yet, here it is now. It's the result of craftsmanship that only Samsung can achieve. A delicate process, so difficult to master, 
it takes 800 degrees Celsius just to curve the glass. When dealing with tens of millions of devices, this was once impossible. But you know what? We did it. Now we have the first devices of each kind, the S6 Edge. It has an amazing viewing experience. It must have had a decent sales for the Edge. Uh, they wouldn't have above stuck above, with that. Your friends will think. Not only that, but in Android, you really cool. have to differentiate. Yeah. It's you, you have to get something that's so completely different. Well, and the competition is the M9 now, and uh, it's beautifully else. designed. Yeah, I, I mean they the made this bet on these curved sample, screens, um, I was amazed and it's, by it's no small task. I mean they had to re-engineer some of the equipment the to create these screens. Right. Um, that gives an so they of invested a lot of money into this, richness. so they kind of had to keep building these things. The gold seems to have a life of its own. Moving between gold. So to your question and before, silver, it looks like depending uh, on how you look at it. The S six runs lollipop. Both the S six and the S six uh, Edge. Coming out of Verge, Samsung colors, also turned back the software quality, features, claiming there are like forty you've percent never fewer features in, a in the Galaxy before. S six than the S five. We've all Overall, dropped and off, shattered our point the before. same, however. And it's a huge pain. Well, Gorilla Glass four has your back. So Good. not she only really does it look great, center. I'm very pleased by this. Super yeah. tough. In fact, it's the toughest in the market. Also, the special metal that we she's use. The, she's the, the, is the designer. Fifty percent stronger than the metal. You know, they announced her at the beginning, and I didn't smartphones. make a note of it. They didn't really give a title or anything. She said she had been involved the in the launches. But I do know yes. that this stuff will not bend. A uh, little shot at Apple there. This phone will not bend. That's silly, <laughs> but okay. I mean, what our engineers and designers accomplished with the glass and metal is really amazing in terms of bringing together technology and design to create something awesome. Everything about the exterior is amazing, but in a beauty, is just as important, if not more so. Interacting with the device has also been greatly improved. And to explain this in detail, please welcome from our UX innovation team, Hyun Yoo Lee. Hi, everyone. It's so great to be here to talk about our new design philosophy, design with purpose. We've been driving relentless innovation in our user interface, and we are listening. The changes we've made were suggested by customers and our friends on the internet. We focused on the essentials. We reimagined the user experience so it's more intuitive and simpler to use. We started with a more logical structure and reduced the depth to the menus and settings. Plus, we swapped out abstract icons and replaced them with clear, concise text. Oh, that's Very interesting. Well. Mm, that's Everything an Apple change. Yeah. That got in the way of you having the best it's experience. It's very much not Lollipop. No more unnecessary alerts and notifications or struggling with hard to use and hard to so, find So features. there is very much a TouchWiz presence here. This Thanks is far from a Google Pure experience. And a streamlined interface Lag or stuttering is gone. Even that was one complaint against TouchWiz and all the skins that the More OEMs than ever, put on there as it slows these things devices down. Devices are insanely responsive. Insanely Our responsive. New <laughs> visual experience That's is an Apple word, isn't it? Exactly what you've been waiting for. <laughs> insanely as you great. Can see, we used bright and simple colors to make everything more clear and better okay, organized. That's and you'll see, see this idea throughout so the it looks interface. Like, it looks like they really want the Samsung apps These to harmonize the with the Android apps. Which we made more legible that, that, that yeah. looks simpler. very lollipop. We also and that, by the way, these are Samsung apps. These are not Microsoft apps. So that rumor apps. was either wrong or... So, green is a phone. It's going to be interpreted in some other way. Then. Purple is video. Orange are contacts. Now, let's dive into the details. Take a look at the camera controls. Everything you need is right at your fingertips. See how easy it is to add an effect to your photo? Again, 
you'll be able to spot and understand the icons faster because we added labels. Apparently, Microsoft apps will be and included. But tapping a single obviously button not front and gives you all the commonly used options. Yeah, that, that always at a seems glance. kind of like an odd Don't choice. Don't you love it? Yeah. It's not in their best interest to the make it a better Microsoft phone. The most wonderful part of all, no scrolling. I do like the cleanliness of this it's camera interface. It's also great face. for casual photographers. Thank you. It's not dramatically different from the existing touch. It's also great for casual photographers. Yeah. Simple and streamlined. But, but if you God want is more in the details. Controls, yeah. There's a separate I've professional always been disappointed with the way that Samsung creative. just wants to put menus everywhere. They just want to put buttons everywhere. Cool. And sometimes now, it will have duplication of edge. interface uh, elsewhere. We it's probably the leading reason why I wasn't space. interested in buying it. Well, one of the leading the reasons why I wasn't interested in buying a note edge, last year. Connects to the people and information it's just not, that a, it's just not, a, not a happy place to be for, Plus, <laughs> for all day. Plus, there's a new feature that lets you use the edge to stay in touch with your favorite people. You can assign a color for up to five contacts. If nothing else, having a rolled screen like that, so much of Lollipop is about swiping in from the left and the right. Yeah, I agree. Without that, if nothing else, is a really nice phone. touch. It's funny, but it does make a difference. Your, yeah. your, every time your finger hits the edge uh, on the Note 4 or the S5, you go, ow, ow. Not ow, ow, but and it, it feels like that's not an intrinsic it's part so of the experience. Whereas if you make a curve to begin with, even if all they did was curve the glass no and left the display the flat, right? I think well, that would be a good just thing. Just place your finger I mean, just put touch sensors sensor, on the edge. And off goes the one touch auto reply. Sorry, JK. And on top of that, you can have up to five contacts you miss show up right this on the lock. Is, these are all TouchWiz customizations to Google's and Android, uh, right Android 5.0. So they look nice in the demo, it's at least. Yeah, they look fine. But yeah, if somebody was hoping for a simpler TouchWiz, first, they didn't the get design it. of the exterior, sleek. But I think for differentiation purposes, this this is reasonable. Second, the user it's gonna be interesting to see how they simple, if they. Fast. And then market the curved display as All this is the default Samsung purpose. Galaxy, and we also have the flat one for people who now, don't want to bother yeah. with that. Yeah. Or if they simply say, uh, "We'll make we'll these. You if you want them, we'll get them to you." It seems like it seems Please like the gutsier thing to do would be say, "Nope, this is the Galaxy S6." According to uh, Engadget, the uh, camera is f 1.9, which is just extremely fast for a camera phone with optical Thank image you. stabilization. Should be good low light performance. Excellent design is critical. And when it's matched with powerful performance, you get First something necktie, we've truly seen. unique. The S6 and S6 Edge now set the performance bar for the entire industry. This is how. It starts with the processor, one of a kind. It has a 64-bit architecture built using 14 nanometer technology. It's a world's first in a smartphone. It's more powerful but also smaller and easier on the battery. To put this in perspective, it has 20% faster performance and is 35% more efficient than the 20 nanometer chip in the Galaxy Note 4. Next, we went beyond the industry standard DDR3 RAM and instead used DDR4, boosting the running memory by greater than 80%. For your do appreciate data, some technical details. we've developed is, all yeah, new flash storage technology. It's a this is almost a pitch SSD to PCs, the other, the uh, flash. you know, smartphone makers in the audience because Samsung less power makes all these chips. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they yeah. sell these Playing chips games, around right. the industry. Watching videos, MMC uh, uh, storage is great. That, that actually might make a huge interruption difference. Or lag. And it's one of the flaws now, of the Nexus 6, the Google, uh, latest the Google phone, is the slow storage, partly because it's encrypted has always been associated with outstanding displays. We set the bar high with Super AMOLED. I have to admit, that Today, curve, maybe, maybe that I'm convinced. Even higher. And they're not focusing, by the way, on side screen content. It's, it's, it looks like it's just a curved ever screen. ever seen on a smartphone. 5.1 inch, 577 quad HD, PPI. Super AMOLED, with 577 pixels per inch. <laughs> even though the S5 has an amazing display. By the way, the S6 woman was Young He Lee, uh, Samsung's head of marketing. Pixels. Got it. And there's nothing the more first representative one. of our display innovation than our Galaxy S6 Edge. It has a Super AMOLED screen wrapped around both edges of the device. MMC is the kind of inviting uh, you to a wonderful viewing experience. Flash RAM used typically in SSD drives While is we're faster than about display innovation, the storage that uh, has we're been used. We're also excited now. to announce a new Gear VR. 
And it <laughs> Did they even sell the old Gear VR? Yeah. <laughs> and SX. <laughs> it was on the market for a couple of months. Now uh, you've got a new VR headset not <laughs> to buy. You. Wow. It's designed for S6. Oh, well, that makes sense because you put the phone the in pixel density of the, the S6 Gear VR. And so the current Gear VR is a Note 4 only, I think, 4, right? So this makes you it possible to use the uh, visual experience S6 with, with a new Gear images. VR. Jason Clanthus brought his Gear VR so I can, processing power I can I wear it about. during the show today. <laughs> it's why you no, no, you don't want to virtually be there. In case there's any welding oh, necessary, I'm ready. The show with that on. You want some emotional distance from all these effects, I think. How about on Twitter, that? Uh, what's uh, next? Uh, name was Pratik Patel raises a point that didn't, I didn't consider uh, the curved screen might make Thank it you. kind of an interesting challenge to make cases for this. Yeah. As you know, and people battery like is added protection. And, when consumers think about okay, their battery, phones. let's see what they have to say so about this. So we're always this. looking for ways to improve it. The S6 family has an enhanced processor that performs better but draws less power. A screen that's even more brilliant. Yet handles energy the Achilles heel of Android has always been not even necessarily no power, but power management. Never -ending battery, it is right. so no easy to put down your phone and then pick it up four hours later and have 10% battery life. Yeah, it's left hot. Not no repeat, because it's been working so hard. Faster than any in the with industry. With all these Samsung Does that matter to you? on it, that should presumably only yeah. make things worse. Yeah. Get this. It only takes 10 minutes to get enough charge for up to four hours of everyday use. Now, this is interesting because this feature was part of the Qualcomm chipset, right. this rapid charging, and is featured in a lot of phones using charging Snapdragons, but this is with an Exynos, so. It takes roughly half the time of the iPhone 6. Really? <laughs> Thank you. I have found that rapid charging to be a nice feature that yeah. does somewhat I make up for the lack of, of an interchangeable battery. And I battery. find myself in situations yeah. where I'm low on battery, what if it's going to support can't stay in one place wireless long charging. enough to find a charge? Yes, they said both Qi and PMA shop, in one phone. So you, what, what, if you have a power mat or a Qi charger, it'll work, which is going. nice. But with the Samsung sales on aftermarket uh, back for the Note 4 that gives it Qi charging. Battery. Yeah. I love, I love, way, uh, you may have noticed a major yeah, change I love that charging. I do too. I, 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 just, I just found religion about now, a month ago. Yeah. But now it's like every place time. I might sit down my phone, I've got a, a key to. Didn't want to have and a as, as JK Chin, Chin pointed so out, you know, when you go to bed in the dark, sure having being able to put it somewhere and just that's it is a lot easier than trying to find that. Especially it's with the microphone. It's, it's a natural thing. You, you take your phone, you put it on the nightstand. Yeah. You don't take your phone and find where the plug is and plug it in and put it on the nightstand. Even setting it into a plug in charger is just, no, you just put it on the nightstand. Here's the wireless. It'll be okay. Wireless charging. Thank you. Now, I guess he's not going to mention which. All packed into an incredibly Stands. thin 6.8 millimeters. So as Mark pointed sure. out, uh, wireless charging has been many, around, uh, but there hasn't ever been full dedication to it. Journalists have already had access to this embargoed, and Special the embargo is being lifted. The, you're seeing an coverage cover, and lots of details. And of course, you needed to find the right the charging blogs. pad that worked with your phone. There's nothing really convenient about that, is there? With built-in wireless charging and the rapid increase in wireless charging pads at cafes, restaurants, and offices, you already have everything you need. Yeah, there need. it is. I got to say, and I've never seen a wireless charging station at a cafe. Never. <laughs> I agree. I've seen, I've seen them at, Star at Starbucks in Boston. Really? I don't know. You yeah, there are a couple like up in Cambridge. You see a lot of like the the, the like the seating bars at the windows. Arrived. It's like every you know two feet there's a yeah. charging pad. It's I like it that it supports both standards. So, that's a big also, issue. Also, other the public Galaxy charging stations, you don't S6 give the charger access to your USB port. Device. Right. Uh, the, the oh, whole good point. Good you point. just get power, and yet that's and I would actually trust it. Yeah. And built-in wireless charging to keep you going until we invent that never-ending battery. Now, on to our new camera. It's well known just about everyone is using their mobile phone as their main camera. And tonight, we're doing the same. We are so confident about the quality of our camera that all of the scenes that you're watching in this making of video were shot using our new device. And as you've already seen, we're using some of those same videos and <laughs> this images. Stuttering slow motion? I think shot. that's not a good. Demo. I have lots of specs and details for you, but first, are they slowing it down so we can we drink it in? Or? 
as a camera, smartphones let's, get let's, the job done. Let's take done, that off the screen. For the yeah. most part. Yeah. But the key challenge is creating a camera that excels in all lighting conditions. This camera can do that, especially in low light. How about a brighter f1.9 lens? I, th I think is the fastest Real -time lens HDR uh, in the market today. A special low camera light phones. shot feature that combines iPhone is multiple f2. photos to create the brightest image. The, uh, that sounds great, right? HTC is uh, f2. Thank you. If I remember correctly. Tell us about the selfie now, camera. That would be a pretty <laughs> impressive rear camera. Here it comes. I'm actually talking about the front camera. There we go. Actually, that was all the front camera. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> that is both, both are 16 megapixels. The front camera, which boasts 5 megapixels, oh, we right. used an f1.9 uh. lens instead of the S5's f2.4 lens. That lets in 60% more light. And we increased the pixel size by 43%, meaning lower light noise and better low light photography. And that real time HDR I mentioned, another world's first. Mm, iPhone 6 does that, doesn't it? That's going to make a huge difference when you're camera? capturing the moment, yeah. especially in low light. I don't Let think me the, show you. On iPhone camera does Here's that. a close up. Take I think it, it does that S6 video, doesn't it? In a dimly lit bar with no flash. I mean, there's never been it actually a front looks pretty camera good, but as powerful yeah. as this. A, a demo is completely useless. It is a remarkable useless. achievement. No Take flash, but we have uh, 17 Klieg lights. <laughs> You're looking at the level of quality you get with the rear camera. Look at the crispness, the rich colors, the details in the background. It has a 16 megapixel sensor. This is fairly credible only because they're, they've been doing such a good job with their cameras. We also included the optical Yeah, uh, this is the first time, this is the first time I've, I've I can remember seeing a, a phone launch where they actually, here is a Check gallery of photos taken with the front camera. This is the difference you will see right off As the opposed back. to, hey, look at the specs that we put into it. Oh, take that, Apple. Sorry, what did you say? On the left, uh, an iPhone, on the right, oh. yeah. six. No touch up. No tweak settings, no Photoshopping. It's incredible. And we didn't just improve still images. Video is you really should have a better white and gold dress so, there. I think for the what you're looking at now was results. shot with the iPhone 6 Plus. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hard to tell what this is, but I think it's a couple sitting. Can you show uh, me a better video of that? Video. Same scene, it's same true. lighting conditions. Same everything. That's wow. shot with the S6. <laughs> That's great. Cool, right? The iPhone has very good low light performance, so. We are tremendously proud of what we've been able to achieve. And it's all because of the incredibly bright F1.9 lens. We can't wait to see what you'll create with it. Another thing we heard from you is that you wanted to be able to take a picture at a moment's notice. For me, to see all three of my kids smiling, getting along, posed perfectly with a well-behaved dog. That when is the that beigest happens, outfit I've ever seen. If it happens. It's like if I you retire from the Navy right after 18 then. years, that's how you dress yourself answer, for the first month. The I think it's black and blue, is isn't it? always on standby. <laughs> I think it's white and gold. Which means yeah. it launches in less than a second. I'm so, I, I apologize. It's so close so to the Oscars, I can't help it. <laughs> your your tuxedo the commentary was the marvelous throughout the Oscars. I just think either tux, either tuxedo is either a tuxedo or it is not. Don't pretend that... Okay. And red is Freedom not a tuxedo. Yeah. And what happens if everything's moving around? Not a problem. Because the he looks camera fine. will he, he's follow very your subject, man, keeping it in focus. <laughs> All you need to worry about is pressing the shutter. Look how much this time they're spending talking about the camera versus everything else they've talked about. It just shows you so that's so a big, important feature. That's what, pe that's what people buy cameras for, uh, buy phones for. Those are just a few of the highlights of the amazing S6 camera, your perfect companion to capture any moment. Now. Let me expand on what Mr. Shin was talking about with regards to Samsung Pay. I mentioned earlier that we didn't want to go with a built-in battery until we were absolutely sure the technology was right. 
The same goes for making purchases with your mobile phone. We believe that for any payment service to be successful, universal acceptance you have to get a taste. is critical. NFC is not universally accepted. In the U.S., for instance, it limits your purchasing options to less than 10% of merchants. That it's leaves bad. a greater than 90% chance you won't be making a mobile purchase when you go shopping. That's why we developed Samsung Pay, which will allow you to use your Samsung phone to pay anywhere that accepts credit cards, debit cards, or NFC. Thank you. With our innovative technology called MST, Samsung solves the acceptance problem. It's groundbreaking because MST allows you to use mobile payments even when a merchant only supports MagStripe. It's so simple to use. You swipe up from the bezel to activate Samsung Pay, authenticate with your fingerprint, and then tap it to the card reader, and you're done. Samsung Pay is also secure. When you're making a purchase, you're protected two ways. Your fingerprint starts the process, and your card information is encrypted through tokenization. No card data is stored in the, dev in the device or with Samsung. This is the same technology Apple to touts with a Apple. Best in class yes, mobile they create a new solution, credit card number Samsung for every has partnered transaction. With major payment networks such as MasterCard and Visa. Our partnership ecosystem for Samsung Pay is also expanding to include more global financial institutions, such as American Express, Bank of America, Chase, Citi, and U.S. Bank, to name a few. Starting this summer in the U.S. and Korea, Samsung Pay will be accepted by far and away more merchants than any other offering. That's interesting. That's a shot still, right at Apple. I Pay. still don't understand how this works. Have they explained it yet? Uh, yeah, I mean, yes. well, it, Loop, Loop we Pay, which has been around for a while, they acquired this technology, rights. sends a magnetic field that a stripe reader now, sees as a swipe. Let's wrap it up. So you Basically could put your phone next to the swipe process. machine, and it okay. thinks it's been Best swiped. All around display. That's what gives uh, it more terminals. You don't need a touch to pay terminal for this to work. Wireless charging. The fastest, so, well, wasn't that deal just announced, though? How did they get that built in? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That's how I guess they, they the moved fast. Signed a deal a while ago. Well, remember, the phone isn't out until April 10th. So. New Galaxy is not Even only still, to build that, you know, I doubt they did start last right month. Out of the no, box. I agree. Also, I'm not going to be the first person to I'd use like that. To a colleague of mine, it's, it seems like Wade. if you know that people are using phones that way, you could stick something underneath the counter to try to intercept. Yeah, if, you, if you're basically broadcasting a magnetic field. Right. Thank you. But I'd if like to see how that's... It's been program. around. In fact, like one of our staffers, Jeff Needles, has a loop pay uh, system, and he says it works Let quite well. Right in and and say he's this. used it secured many times. The Galaxy S6 ranks well, well it's secured with a thumbprint. No, I mean, I, I mean that. Today. I understand what you're saying. It's a field. Can, can I can I intercept that uh, that those magnetic uh, right. that magnetic transmission? Built in. I'm sure they thought about this, but they need to communicate this. You're only you're only taking it. Alike. From, for that one transaction number because it created a new card number for every transaction. So there's not a whole lot you can do with that card. Yeah. And hackers. Take it. Right off the bat, Samsung knocks It'd be akin to a double swipe to by a merchant, any merchant. From the right? hardware, software, and application layers. But don't just take my word for it. Check out the news. <laughs> one leading market Still from LeVar Burton, not cool, man. Android's mobile <laughs> OS will dominate the business landscape. And when it comes to areas of business that matter most, a top technology research firm gives Samsung Knox high rankings. The Galaxy S6 is definitely ready for business right now. Top technology research firm gives Samsung Knox high top rankings. Government agencies <laughs> That's in the US. <laughs> Knox was accepted, though. Uh, Knox has been accepted by government agencies, agencies US UK government agencies. I think yeah. Knox is widely Some accepted as a secure platform. Even Apple in endorsed Knox. Mobile oh, yeah, it's legitimate. Security. They actually rely on some and NSA code to, uh, to help power that, list. that system. Uh, the secure the Android S6 that the NSA developed. Uh, so the government was happy to get on board with that. Blackberry. 
Um, but I, I just felt like they could have had a more convincing yeah. argument. An a unnamed technology research firm. Yeah. So is ready for business the moment you turn it on. This means that your company's IT manager can easily integrate and manage it. Whether you're in the office or on the road. This is not a new technology. This is a couple of years old. This is something Samsung's been pushing. It's helped Samsung in the enterprise. Just turn it on. Um, and now, before we turn you loose on the devices, please welcome back my colleague, Young Hee Lee. Thank you very much. Again, Young Hee Lee is uh, head of marketing for Samsung. She's pretty like attacking I back said, yeah. today's unpacked was a big one. The best in design and performance for personal and enterprise. Tonight, we bring you the beginning of a whole new galaxy. What's next? It's a question with infinite possibilities. You're watching live coverage of Samsung's Galaxy Unpacked 2015 event in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress. Mike Elgin is in the audience, and we're hoping to get a live commentary from him as soon as the event ends. Invent and see things in a whole new way. We're always looking ahead to what's next. It's a really good looking phone. And making it happen. I think I might actually uh, buy the Edge version. Because it's, it's a very handsome looking phone. Yeah. A reality. And if it's when still full of, like, today. Samsung UI crap, they hid that very, very smartly from this presentation. It also has a design-wise that uh, the camera on the inspired. back kind of juts out like it does on the, yeah. the new iPhones. I guess they just can't get the sensor small enough the to fit in the case. It's a, well, it's a 20, it's a 20 megapixel sensor. This is, if the uh, cameras on the phones, iPhones are great, but they're going to start to hit a wall at 8 megapixels. Next because 20, uh, 16 and 20, to me, starts to make up the extra data that it's collecting, I think, is making up for a lot of the, the really great post-processing the iPhone is doing. I'm sure you've been waiting to know the S6 and the S6 Edge will be available from April 10th in 20 countries. Next is and now continue to or April 10th, after that or April 10th all of the whichever comes last. And you'll be able to purchase them in 32, 64, and 128 gigabyte options, along with an array of Samsung accessories. For this launch, we also synced up with our partners to make sure you find perfect accessories to go with your new phone. They're going to have to make the cases for the Edge, I think. Now, the yeah. Galaxy S6 and the S6 Edge are here. Thank you to everyone in Barcelona and those watching around the world. OK, that's it. Now it's your time to <laughs> I love that. explore <laughs> that's devices. Better than one more thing. OK, Enjoy. that's it. <laughs> to love and serve Samsung. It's the new tagline. No more one more thing. It's okay, that's it. Get okay, out of here. Should, get out they here. should get Tracy Ullman. Okay, go home. Go home. Go home. What go are you doing home. here? So they uh, will now do, as they have done in the past, kind of a lounge where they'll have paid Hello. tech experts sitting around doing a talk show. Uh, Callie Lewis did it last time. I'm curious who they hired this time. But we'll cut away from that. We're getting Mike ready. Mike, I don't know her. Hi Hi there, Ola, is her name. Uh, we, uh, we're going to get a mic up as soon as we can through the uh, auspices of the uh, live view. He was at the event, as well as uh, Miriam Joir, and get his commentary. But let's summarize. Uh, by the way, uh, un uh, surprisingly, really, the, the, the only announcement was the S6 and then a new Gear VR designed specifically to hold the S6, which is m not much of a big change. Because Oh, yeah. th yep, there's John... Uh, from uh, John Posides, Posides, or John P, as we call him, of uh, of uh, Geek Beat. He's a tech expert doing the little tour there. Actually, why don't you go back to this, because they're showing the uh, the lab where uh, all the uh, people will be going back. S6 Edge. Do you have the video? Look at yeah. This bad boy. I love this thing. <laughs> they haven't let anybody in yet, but you can see the. Uh, there they go. The journalists are now it coming into the demo. You can turn John's voice off. Both but, uh, they're going into the room there so uh, they can get a demo. So we're going to try to get. Uh, oh, there's a, there's a case. Is that a case or is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, that's interesting. It shows through the case. 
I guess part of the point would be you would want to be able to see a notification through the right. edge while the case is closed. HTC solved that last year with a little holes in the case cover, but yeah. it looks like they're doing something that's translucent. Oh, got a they have case, those yeah. Samsung Note covers with the, uh, with, you know, like Yeah, and I've opening. used those. They have a little viewport up at the top, yeah. and uh, the, o uh, the OLED, uh, AMOLED screens can do that. Can they show a little bit, light up a little bit of the screen instead of the whole screen to do that? That's a nice-looking uh, case. Very complimentary. We've got a clear plastic case that is a good. So just to, you can cut his audio if you want to keep showing the video. That's fine though, but you can cut his audio. There's a viewport case, kind of like the existing Note 4 cases. Um, so once again, uh, the Galaxy S6 and the S6 Edge, the Edge and the S6, much as predicted by the uh, rumor mill, the uh, Edge will have a wraparound screen. Although as I look at the images, this is from the Verge. All all of the uh, Tech blogs, including Bloomberg Business Week, got uh, pre-release versions of this for testing, uh, but were embargoed until right at the beginning of the event. So all of them are publishing coverage. This is an image from The, uh, the Verge. And you can see with the Edge, uh, they're not doing that Fakatka kind of third screen thing or second screen thing uh, down the side. This is just a curved glass surface. Yeah. And it looks like the wallpaper goes across it, but right. not necessarily... The rest of the UI. So the I previous think the previous edge was two screens. It was a, a flat screen, yep. which was reduced somewhat to take to make room for the curved portion. Yeah. Um, and you would get notifications kind of scrolling, almost like a stock ticker on the side. Yeah, exactly. Right? Uh, it was a little weird. This actually just looks like a design touch. Yeah. It, it, it'll be interesting to see if, if Samsung rooted apps actually do anything to take advantage of that. But as I, as I've been saying, if all the, if all they did was extend the touch sensor to the edges, uh, to, to the sides, that in itself is a really cool touch. And if again, if all if all it does is make it a cooler looking phone that people will want to gravitate to in, inside the store instead of the the, the new HTC, uh, the or any of the other uh, new phones that are out there, that's good enough. Uh, the biggest, as you pointed out, uh, Andy, the biggest uh, uh, change is uh, um, actually what is the biggest change? The biggest change is the camera, <laughs> I would guess. F one point nine, uh, dear God, what front did and we back, just watch? five megapixels. <laughs> the biggest change is you. It's no longer a phone. It's uh, relentless well, innovation. It's, uh, the biggest yeah. change, actually, in my mind, because it was something that really distinguished the Samsung phones, is that you can no longer remove the battery. Have a second battery to pop in. And uh, no SD card either, but to make up for that, they're offering 3264 and 128 gig that's, versions. That, that, that's that's a fine trade-off. And as you as you yourself mentioned, that one of the trade-offs of that replaceable battery and that uh, the way that they did that expandable card is that you have to have a thin plastic cover that you snap off and then snap on again. And I don't think that was a great. So that, I don't think that was a great. Uh, trade-off. Also, they did a lot of refinements, like uh, the fingerprint sensor on the old ones that was okay, but you really don't... It's something that you have to swipe, and it's not necessarily reliable, is not as good as touch, hold for half a second, and it right. works. We still, have, we still have to establish if it actually works. Uh, remember that uh, the uh, Motor, uh, Motorola uh, senior executive once said that we intended for them to for there to be a one touch fingerprint sensor on the uh, on the uh, Nexus Six, but we found that at the time we we're designing this, there was only one company making those good sensors, and Apple bought them. Uh, and so I wonder where they're sourcing that part, or if they're making that part themselves. That in itself would be exciting if Samsung were making a really good one touch fingerprint sensor that they don't get sued over, and now can sell that component to other Android phones. That in itself could be as big a piece of news uh, from a World Congress as anything else. Also, yeah. uh, uh, um, they uh, no word they didn't mention at all of Microsoft apps on here. Yeah. Uh, so that rumor, yeah, just, I guess, was yeah. bogus. Or maybe they were hearing about a different project. That's another shoe that's going to drop later. They, they can, if they're, they, they did take the time to say what a good business phone this is. And now that Microsoft really seems to be figuring out what they want to do as a mobile company, for Samsung to embrace this almost as well as any Microsoft branded operating system phone would be a really big lever uh, for uh, for Samsung to be operating because uh, they are still fighting against Apple. They're still they're still the number one making number one uh, Android maker. I think they're also the number one phone maker still. 
uh, as in terms of individual manufacturers across all of the models that they make. So if they want to yep. hold on to that, they can simply say we have the great we have the great camera for for your home stuff, and also we have the phone that your IT department will actually encourage you to use because it's so easy to support and administrate. Uh, by the way, uh, according to PBS, uh, there are three Microsoft apps pre-bundled. So that's, I guess, where this rumor came from. Not a significant uh, difference. OneDrive, OneNote, and Skype are bundled uh, in. Um, that's not the same thing as Microsoft replacing the Samsung apps with their uh, own apps. By the way, that was Amber MacArthur. I'm sorry I didn't recognize her. Her hair is a little darker than it used to be. So Amber MacArthur is hosting the Samsung uh, Lounge event along with John P. And uh, I think they had their lower third wrong. Colin Furs, I guess, is the uh, third uh, person there. So I apologize for not, I didn't recognize Amber with her new uh, dark do. Uh, we're going to take a break. We're, are we going to be able to get Mike Elgin uh, on? We're getting the uh, live view fired up and the camera ready, and we'll get to uh, go to Barcelona uh, in just a moment and say hello to Mike Elgin. But I want to remind you that our special coverage of Samsung's unpacked uh, event for 2015 is brought to you by lynda.com. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Linda is a great online learning platform. We've talked about it many times before. Uh, Linda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen, whether it's for work or play, for your hobby, for your life. You can learn negotiation tactics, build a website, boost your Photoshop skills, master Excel. Linda.com has 3,000 plus courses in everything you need to feed your curious mind. If you're interested in Android development, they've got the Android Studio Essential Training, up and running with Java, the Code Clinic, which I really enjoy. It's a series uh, where Lynda.com issues a monthly code challenge. You can try to solve it yourself, and then uh, the experts share their solutions using a variety of different programming languages. This is just fun. Lynda.com membership. We've got a 10-day trial for you waiting. Uh, membership is a flat monthly rate, which gives you access to everything. All the courses from top experts passionate about teaching. Many of the people you've seen on the Twit Network, like Bert Monroy. Stream thousands of video courses on demand. Learn on your own schedule. Learn at your own pace. There are transcripts, written transcripts of each course, so you can search for an answer and skip to that point in the video. Or follow along. I like to do that. Take notes as you go. Refer to them later on screen. Download tutorials. Watch them on the go. You can access Linda's courses on iOS or Android with their free apps. Create and save playlists of courses you want to watch. I just think Linda's great. With a lynda.com membership, you get unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics for one flat rate. Go to lynda.com slash twit and get your free 10-day trial. 10 days for the run of the place. Linda, L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash twit. We thank them for their support. You're watching live coverage of Samsung's Mobile World Congress press event. They call it Samsung Unpacked 2015. They announced the new, as we expected, Samsung Galaxy S6, the S6 Edge, and a new Galaxy Gear VR a helmet designed to work with the S6, which doesn't really change much. This is just a holder. So uh, this used to require a Note 4. The new one will work with the uh, S6. So really, they didn't announce new watches. This actually was smart because in previous events, they've had so many products. This focused exactly on what they needed to focus. The S5 announced last year was such a disappointment. I think Samsung realized that they had to work a little bit harder to make this be a, a, a phone. And I have to say, despite the fact that we've already seen other phones, the HTC One was announced earlier today, the M9, much as rumored, very much like the old M8. Uh, this one is a big change. As Sandy mentioned, yeah. a, a newly redesigned fingerprint reader, you just touch, no longer do you have to swipe. Uh, still a physical home button, but that's the fingerprint reader as well, so that makes sense. Uh, touch Whiz is not gone, uh, but an interesting use of the edge screen. It is no longer... It isn't three screens. It's one screen with a just curved glass edge around it. And as you pointed out, Andy, I think that's nice uh, for swiping. Yeah. I think it's also, we, we've also been hearing lots of rumors or at least a lot of speculation in the past two or three years that Samsung intended to break away from Android as quickly as possible or to get allegiance towards the Samsung user inter interface experience. So I think it's an interesting point that they are, although we're still using the Samsung uh, interface, they really do seem to have flattened it and taken a lot of the style uh, style cues uh, from uh, from uh, Lollipop's design. Yeah. So people so people people will not feel the same sense of I'm now in Android land. I'm now in Samsung land. That I think sort of marred the S4 and the S5 uh, user yeah. experience. Yeah. The side of the uh, of the regular S6 does look a lot like an iPhone. It's kind of uh, it's got some, if you yeah. look at my screen, they've got some look, look, chamfered yeah. metal 
Um, scroll, scroll back down again. You can see that the edge, the, the, the actual live edge, video edge of the screen doesn't extend that far across the case. Yeah. So there's, that's, there's, still a, there's still a bezel, but it really, it seems like this is just a continuation of the swipe area uh, and a way to make the make this look like an infinity pool where you don't see the end yeah. of it. I like that. I think that actually will, that isn't the same as the edge of this year. Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's, this is a very different uh, kind of edge. No, no let's, second screen. Let's, let's see what happens when you drop it though. <laughs> Just more places to break. Yeah. I mean that, that's, and that's not even a joke. I mean, if yeah. this, remember that the first time that when Apple went with the glass back, when people said, oh, look how easily I can smash the, the back of it. Now, now you've given me two surfaces that I can break instead of just one. Um, it's it's going to be interesting to see if this is just as durable. They made they made a big uh, a, a big talk about how well, this is Gorilla Gorilla Glass eighty one. Uh, this is a, this is built to certain specs, but it's going to we're not going to find out about that until this has been in the field for about a month and people see are able to say, hey, look, all I did was all I did was drop it off of a two foot high coffee table onto tile. Hey, my my old Samsung was able to handle that pretty much okay. Yeah, because it had a plastic body and a <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a back case that would just like take the brunt of it and pop off for you. Uh, yeah, this is I'm also, looking. Go ahead, Mark. I mean that joke about uh, how the, how this phone doesn't bend. Um, more likely, it would just shatter into a million pieces <laughs> and drop it. I it is Gorilla probably... Glass Four. They say it's the toughest uh, Gorilla Glass uh, out. I'm, I'm looking now at pictures from The Verge, and in fact, the uh, one of the edges is a live screen. I don't think it's a second screen as it is on the current. Uh, Galaxy Edge. I think this is uh, just the uh, OLED. Use, they're using the OLED display to display yeah. uh, more yeah. material. But you know, one yeah. thing I got to point out, one of the reasons I didn't like the Edge is what you're seeing right now, which is a weather forecast time, was upside down on the last Edge. It was facing away from you. Even though Gal they had said, Samsung in their event said, well, if you're at a meeting, you could have it on the on the table and look at the edge. It was upside down, and there was no way to turn it around. This at least is oriented properly, so I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy for that. Uh, I think this is a nice feature. You, 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 you're at a conference uh, or at a meeting, and you can just leave it on the, and you can check it in. And I presume my notifications would also pop up there. Particularly yeah. given that when notifications happen on the front of the screen, everybody can see them. Yeah. You can put this, you can Smart leave this on private. a restaurant table and just now you're the only one who can reload. Yeah. Okay, maybe the person next to you, but. Uh, camera, you you were uh, noting what a good camera uh, uh, they're, they're again, we haven't played with it yet, but what they're promoting here. Yeah, this, the specs look really, really good. And and what I was saying earlier is that the, the, the power of the iPhone 6, the iPhone's camera has always been not necessarily in the number of megapixels because Apple, I think, wisely early on said we're not in that fight, but in the amount of post-processing that it does, the amount of intelligence that they put uh, by, in the developing process and turning that those numbers off of the image sensor into a JPEG, that's where its strength is. The thing is, though, as I keep using more and more uh, Android phones that have larger megapixels, a lot of that special sauce in the Apple phones are being negated by all of the data that these larger megapixel phones are taking. And the other problem is that you don't, on an eight, even on an 8 megapixel camera, you have to make sure that you're framing that image exactly the way you want because you're not going to really be able to crop that down as much as you would like uh, to put focus on the actual loved ones in the picture. Uh, and it's this is going to be an interesting thing to see if Apple decides to go to at least a 12 megapixel camera uh, in the iPhone 7 because they're starting to lose ground uh, yeah. in imaging. It's a uh, 20 or I think it's a 16 megapixel for this. I No, I'm not sure. 20 is on the uh, HTC One, the M9. I could be. I, I, I'll have I, to check I, the specs. Check. I think Samsung wanted to shut down that that argument that Apple does make about right. how it's all in the software processing after the right. photo is taken, and and they I think they did that pretty effectively by putting the two side by side pictures of yeah. this phone's uh, this photo was taken with an iPhone six plus, this one with a Galaxy S six, and the, the the same sort of thing that they did for video was even more pronounced. And we um, should we should point out that there's a, there's a the number of megapixels on a lens this size on a camera phone is maybe not the best way to judge a camera phone. These are tiny, tiny sensors, so putting more pixels but, on them isn't necessarily going to be an improvement. 16 may be the effective level. Well, the, the, the proof is always in the pudding. Right. But, again, Apple used to always say that, hey, we, we have fewer megapixels, but we take better pictures. Right. But that was competing with uh, other makers who were just trying to get that win of, look how many megapixels we have. Right. But now that these sensors are getting better and better and better, 
it's as I'm just saying that a lot of that advantage is being negated. When we, we you compare the Galaxy Note 4 uh, with uh, the iPhone 6 Plus, the two best, I think the, the best Android camera you can buy, the best iOS camera you can buy, and it's hard to every time that I every time that I want to say that the iPhone 6 Plus is a better camera, I'm talking about the overall speed of the user experience and the other the the infrastructure that you you're plugging into. I'm not talking about I'm doing my usual test where I'm taking a tourist walk through Boston. I'm taking shot A, shot B, shot A, shot B, shot A, shot B at 12 different locations. At the end of the day, this is probably the 2014 was the first year where I couldn't necessarily pick out the one that was shot by the iPhone. Samsung did say these phones will be available on all four major U.S. carriers plus U.S. cellular April 10th and around the world at the same time. That's something Samsung can do that Apple has in the past found difficult is to get these phones out in every market. Four different colors. You can see them uh, right here in the Verge's uh, pictures, uh, including... Only the Edge will have the uh, the green, uh, which looks sort of like a, a British kind racing of a, green. Is that the far right one? or oh, Yeah, the far the, yeah. right. Yeah, like so it's a green. white, black, gold for all models, and then the, the Edge also comes in green. The, I'm looking at the TechCrunch uh, review of it. I think they emerald or topaz or something. Yeah, you can yeah. see it's greenish. It's kind of a gray green. It's a darker green, but maybe but, that's but the picture. The, it, but it's a metal, and you put the light on it. And yeah. I'm looking at the TechCrunch uh, review of it, and that's that's a, that's a good looking green, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's the the marketing message um, in some of these pre briefs that they were holding with various publications was saying how these are like uh, like precious gems. Uh, the <laughs> sort of the coloring and the style they were going for. Well, gotcha. they are. In fact, you saw that picture on the Verge. There were gems of those colors below yeah, each phone. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, one thing I don't think that they mentioned during the presentation was about the timing and availability of mobile payments. Um, they Samsung told us that the uh, that Samsung Pay won't be coming out until the third quarter of this year, uh, and only in the U.S. and South Korea. Ah, interesting. So that's going to be a big that's going to be a big and important feature when it launches. You also remember that Apple Pay didn't come out right when the iPhone six came out either. The uh, that I think these um, phone companies tend to be a bit uh, aggressive with what they think they can pull off within the finance industry. It's tough because you got to, you know, there's security issues and you just got to get slow moving conservative banks to adopt your. Here's a picture of the green. This is the TechCrunch picture. That You're right. It is, the camera is 16 megapixels. 16. Okay. My apologies. Okay. But there's a cool. Uh, after that is green. You're right. <laughs> that is very green. Really? That's that's green. The, but really cool feature that makes me like this even more. Uh, the they kept the, the clicky button for the home button, which I think is now unique across all Android phones. But now, if you double tap that clicky button, that takes you instantly to the camera, no matter what app you're oh, in, I like no matter that. part of the experience. That is pretty freaking yeah, hot for me. I think that's a that is. Uh that's even better than a camera button, I guess. Yeah, I mean, uh, one, of the, one of the best features of the Moto uh, phones is that you just take out of your pocket, you right. flick it twice, and <laughs> suddenly you've got, the, you've got a camera in front of you. Uh, that's it, as much as I like uh, the, the iPhones and other devices, the fact that I, <laughs> I have to treat it like a phone before I can treat it like a camera, that's something that I really wish every maker would solve. Do you find that the flicking thing goes off uh, accidentally at times. I mean, I know with the shake to undo on the iPhone, I'm like constantly yeah, getting to that undo pop-ups when I don't want them. Uh, I no, uh, I carried a, a Moto uh, a Moto X, both the first generation and the second generation, for like a whole month. And if it ever went off in my pocket, it went back to sleep then again. So mm. you, you do you do have to like sort of uh, you do have to sort of give it a snap, uh, as opposed to uh, you know like a. Uh, like like a, like a snow globe sort of operation. Here's some uh, hands-on video. This is Daryl Etherington of, um, actually, there's a commercial first. We'll skip the commercial, but uh, of uh, TechCrunch with uh, hands-on. All of the journalists now are starting to post videos. Still working on getting uh, Mike Elgin. We may have some uh, issues. There's not a lot of connectivity in the hall there. Mobile World Congress begins tomorrow, but both Samsung and HTC, I think Huawei as well, have had press conferences, as often the case, uh, ahead of time. Uh, and uh, HTC did announce its M9, the HTC One for 2015, and it's very much uh, what the rumor mill predicted. So is the uh, S6, um, uh, two versions, um, no pricing uh, yet for either. Although I think the Edge is more than $100 more than the uh, than the S5 currently. So I imagine an increased cost for the uh, Edge of around $100. 
I think they're smart not to mention prices since most consumers don't ever see the full unlocked yeah. price. They see a subsidized price. And, you know, if it, you could probably predict it'll be either two or $300 uh, uh, for we the base it. model. The base model is 32 gigabytes. There'll be a 64 and 128 gigabyte uh, version as well. Mm. Do we know so, what kind of... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead, Mike. Uh, no, I'm just going to point out to the uh, to the question Leo had earlier about the, um, the curved... Uh, sort of Display, uh, information yeah, bar yeah, yeah. Um, at the, uh, when the when the phone is not active. Um, Amir Afradi from the information just uh, tweeted, uh, he's in the hands-on area, he says the, uh, the curve part can show notifications, um, but you can't swipe through them. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's not, in fact, uh, like the current Edge. They're just using, I, I would guess, the AMOLED capability to show, mm -hmm. to light up just a part of the screen to... Make that Interesting. edge so, live. Zine, I'm, I'm reading Zenet. They're saying that Microsoft OneDrive and OneNote will come preloaded, and right. you say so you do get storage built into that. Right. Oh, that's, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah. It's, in, it's, interesting, it's interesting that Samsung isn't steering them towards Samsung apps for that. One one thing that I was trying to figure out is if they'd use this opportunity to go with that new uh, style micro USB connector, or if they're using the standard. Uh, what we've seen on all the all it, it other looks phones. like a mic. What's the difference? It looks like a regular micro USB. Well, the, the, you know, the, 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 the one that has an orientation as opposed exactly, to a reverse that, one. That, 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 and that can also uh, take uh, other signal cables. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm looking to see for other uh, reviews to see if anyone mentions it. But I imagine that if that were a feature, someone would have mentioned it. Yeah. Uh, wireless sense. charging and an interesting choice here: to both Qi charging and power mat charging. So. Those are the two standards, incompatible standards in wireless yeah. charging. And Samsung, I think, very wisely has decided to support both, which yeah. is great. It means if you see a, a charging mat, whatever kind it is, you can put your phone on it and charge it. As you point out, Andy, without fear of security risk and data leakage through a USB uh, cable. Yes. Um, I'm impressed that they can get both in there without that. Without I am too. significantly increasing the size. I or am too. You know, the, uh, issues. the yeah. adding Qi charging, this is a Qi charging back uh, for the Galaxy uh, Note 4. And really, it just adds a small little circuit panel here. You, you can even yeah. buy you third can, party. Exactly. Uh, you can buy like little, uh, they're like stickers almost. You stick right. in the bottom. You can do an aftermarket sort of thing. Right. And uh, really, anybody who has a phone that has that feature built in, take a risk, spend 20 bucks on Amazon for one charging pad. I guarantee you it won't be the last one that you get. Uh, I, I even recommend now that uh, if, if you, uh, I, my favorite iPhone battery extenders are the ones that happen to have uh, uh, charging uh, pa charging hardware built in, uh, wireless charging hardware built into them because I had no idea what a mental sort of hiccup it is to have to grab a cable and plug it in to do something until I never had to do that again. And it just, you just now want every single device you have to charge that way. Jeff points out an article in Android Police that IKEA is going to start selling Qi charging furniture in April. <laughs> so even your, even your coffee table or your light, uh, your lamp will be able to charge uh, yeah. your phone. I think that's pretty good. The charger I use is really great, more expensive. Once you've decided that you're into uh, charging, I use a, a, the Tilt View from tylt.com, and I have one at work and one at home on the bedside table. And it's a what's nice is it's more of a stand, so the phone is kind of uh, upright, and uh, and and it's also a lot easier to hit the sweet spot. One of the negatives on char wireless charging is you do have to have the phone positioned. Correctly, sometimes they put magnets in the phone to help you do that. Well, they they also the, the stands that I have actually have uh, three three different antenna grids like built into them, so that really doesn't matter where you lay it down on it. It will it will align with one of them by accident. Ah, that's good. Um, I, I even I even actually wound up getting one for and putting it inside the the phone stand inside my car, so that now I don't have to. I used to that's have nice. to plug it into USB just to get power for the yeah. two hour drive. Now all I do is just toss in the stand. It finds Bluetooth. It finds power. That's very. It's nice. like magic. Yeah, Mark, what do you carry right now as a as a smartphone? Are you carrying a Samsung phone? Uh, no, not currently. You're an Although iPhone I should user have for right? this yeah. broadcast. Yeah, yeah. iPhone uh, six. So well, which, I, no, uh, and I ask for a reason. Does this entice you? Um, yeah, I think uh, you know the design was always a big thing about the hardware design was always a big thing about Samsung that kind of turned me off. It always felt kind of like uh, cheap and plasticky and. Um, you know, that always had its virtues that it was a little more indestructible when dropped. Um, I was actually pretty intrigued by the, um, 
by the waterproofing feature of the last one. Um, so I'm a little disappointed that this one doesn't have that. But I think as a trade off to have this like really sleek, uh, you know, metal and glass design, um, it's probably worth it. Well, we're, uh, I think we're going to wrap up our coverage because I have to go to work and do a radio show. <laughs> um, uh, have, is there a, are we still trying to get Mike Elgin uh, from the uh, room? Uh, I think we're having some uh, uh, connection difficulties. That's fine. Uh, we'll, Mike will, of course, be at Mobile World Congress all week, as will uh, Miriam Schwar, and we will have reports from uh, them on TNT all week long on TN2. Maybe not TNT because it'll be very early in the morning for Mike for TNT, but certainly on our evening uh, newscast and uh, probably all about Android and some of our other shows as well. So uh, we continue with live coverage uh, from Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, what is rapidly becoming the most interesting tech conference uh, <laughs> of the year. I want to thank Mark Billion from Bloomberg Business Week for joining us for our show today. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Leo. Really appreciate you getting up uh, a little bit early. Uh, and uh, Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun-Times. Uh, always a pleasure to have you on, uh, Andy. Appreciate your help as well. Thanks. Uh, there you have it, the Samsung Galaxy S6. No pricing, but availability April 10th worldwide. Uh, a pretty, I think, a fairly impressive incremental improvement to its a Galaxy line. And unlike the S5, uh, sufficiently uh, different that uh, I think people will probably uh, consider it as a, a replacement for existing their existing Galaxy phone. And maybe even a few, like Mark, will consider switching from the iOS platform. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to James and Cleanthus for getting up early and uh, being in here today. And uh, thank you, too. We'll see you next time. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.